If you haven't been living under a rock, you would know that the Amazing Digital Circus is a huge problem with ripoff content, bootlegs, and many other shady things. Ever since the show's inception, people have been looking to capitalize off its success, sometimes even illegally. A few days ago, though, this was addressed by the show's creators themselves. In the new trailer dropped by Glitch Productions, many things were shown to us, such as new locations, characters, and plot details from the next episode as well. Another thing we were shown is some brand new merch that they are dropping for the show. Some of this stuff looks pretty cool too, but what I want to talk about is this clip right here. This clip shows Pomni and Kane looking at the mark that Pomni has made on the internet by simply existing. Your little crying face left quite the little crying mark on the internet. Something I don't canonically have any knowledge of. Take a look. What the f*** am I looking at? The consequences of our actions. And it's only going to get worse from here. Uh, oh no. But that's not what I'm here to show you. And both seem to be disappointed about what the fan base has done. And this could be referencing two things. And I'm gonna be talking about both of them. Firstly, the blurring makes me think that they are referencing sexual content. Basically, people will draw and create content with the amazing digital circus characters in ways that are not very family friendly. And I'll just say that this is kind of proven by the reference in this same video about the violent shipping wars that Kane talks about right here. Speaking of dialogue, there will be all sorts of new new dialogue from many of our new colorful characters! <laughs> With this many new characters, imagine all the violent shipping wars that we'll be completely powerless to do anything about! It's easy to see why the creators of the show do not like this. Fans are taking the characters of the show and putting them in context that are not even close to what the creator intended, essentially using the characters as puppets for whatever sexual content people need to create. And if I think it's gross, there is no way the show's creators are happy with it. So this is why I think that they mentioned it in the trailer. But the other thing they could be talking about is just generally bad YouTube content like content farms and bad theory channels. According to Google, a content farm or content mill is a company that employs large number of freelancers or writers or uses automated tools like ChatGBT to generate a large amount of textual web content that is specifically designed to satisfy algorithms for maximal revealability by search engines, known as SEO. Basically, these channels exploit the amazing digital circus and its characters to pump out as much videos as they can with little to no love or care for the actual series itself, putting basically no effort into their videos, especially if they use AI for the process, which makes makes it even easier for these people. The bad theory channels, while it's not typically as bad, tend to just make up things with little to no proof and pass it off as a theory or even a fact, rather than just speculation. At the end of the day, if their theory ends up just being crap, they still got the click so it doesn't even matter. Instead of just spending their time crafting a theory or even sometimes fact checking, these channels will just basically yap for however long and not even give any insightful thought into the show. But if you guys want videos with insightful thought and love into the amazing digital circus every single day, then subscribe to my channel, because I'm just better than all of these people. Next, I want to talk about Glitch Productions' jab at fake merch in this clip right here. I see. I blocked out for a second. What happened? I eat noodles. How can we support the production of this cool new show? As you just seen, Kane and Pomni were discussing how funds will be raised for the show, before we see Kane transform into his disgusting abomination of a bootleg plushie. Pomni looks at him confused before he turns back to normal and makes a remark about having quote unquote fainted. Well, if you didn't know, what Kane transformed into is one of many bootleg plushies of himself, which still illegally are being sold now to this day. While some people may think it's alright because at the time there weren't any official plushies of Kane available yet, it's still pretty illegal because they are profiting off someone else's creation without their permission, and it's also pretty easy to tell that it's a low quality product. And with the website this plush is being sold from called digitalcircusplush.com, some people may think that it's actually an official product, and once they realize the complete lackluster quality, they probably won't buy any other official Digital Circus merch ever again, because some people do do not do a lot of checking before they buy something to see if it's official or genuine. Either way, I think it's pretty hilarious that Glitch is throwing jabs at these channels. While some might think that this is the first official reference to these bootlegs and bad content, there's actually a lot more that we can look at on Gooseworks' Tumblr page. Gooseworks, since the beginning, has always disliked content farms and all of the other slop that people make with the Digital Circus IP and characters. I mean, take one search on YouTube and you'll pretty much see everything. It's awful. So there's no surprise that even the show's creators is making fun of these awful things. When Gooseworks was asked about the sexuality
quality of the characters from the show, Gooseworks responded with this gif of some triangle man falling down the stairs. Honestly, this is exactly how a lot of people feel. What's the need to know who the characters are attracted to? Just enjoy the show like everyone else. Next, when asked about what their origin story is, Gooseworks responded with quote unquote Lanky Box. If you don't know who Lanky Box is, that's honestly a good thing because their content is just brain rot. Basically, they're a kids channel with obnoxiously bright and loud videos, perfectly stimulating for small children, and they milk whatever's popular at the moment, as well as uploading almost five times a day. How is that even possible? This post I'm about to talk about perfectly sums up my opinion on this. Quote unquote, I've seen people blame me for the content farm videos and saying I could have stopped them. As if I am not feeling the most pain and disgrace by their existence. I've talked to Glitch about it when they first started showing up, plus several other times when people kept asking me to do something about them, but nothing will ever be enough to stop them. I can be your scapegoat if you want, but that's not going to change anything. When all is said and done, I hope at the very least, Digital Circus can be somewhat of an enjoyable show in a vacuum. My job is to write and direct a show, so that's what I'm going to be focusing my efforts on, so I don't know whether or not it'll succeed, but I'm going to try. And honestly, I agree, these content farms are just cringe, but there's nothing we can actually do about them. Well, in a perfect world, they wouldn't exist. We don't live in a perfect world, so the only thing we can do is ignore them and enjoy the amazing Digital Circus in its vacuum, and just forget about everything else. Finally, I would like to talk about why these bootlegs and content farms even exist in the first place. With the fan base of small children comes one thing, people looking to capitalize off the success of the show. Whether it be fake merch, content farms, or downright disgusting and perverted content with clickbait thumbnails, people will do anything it takes to get kids hooked on their content, so that they will fall victim to doom scrolling through one's channel, earning them a lot of ad revenue. One common thing is thumbnails sexualizing the characters, showing images of characters in sexually explicit clothing and poses. This may be bad on its own, but once you consider that the videos are marketed towards children, it makes me sick to my stomach thinking about it in the first place. Children are impressionable, and exposing them to this Elsa Gate style content cannot be good for them in the long run. But these channels don't care because of the massive amounts of money they rake in. Secondly, the fake merch. This is what happens when someone makes unofficial merch with characters or designs from the show without permission from the creators and sell it to make a profit and essentially are just stealing money from the show's creators. Not only is this kind of illegal, but the goods sold are usually very overpriced, as well as being very lacking in the quality department. So, not only are they stealing art, designs, and ideas from the creators of the Amazing Digital Circus, but they are also making a full profit from them. But they are also making a full profit from the sale of fake merch, such as unofficial plushies, t-shirts, and much more. Finally, we have the content farms. One search of the Amazing Digital Circus on YouTube, and you will see pretty much everything you need to know. People milking the Amazing Digital Circus cow dry by constantly making uninspired, lazy videos with no real thought or intent behind it, showing lack of care not only for the show, but their own YouTube channel. The channel Lankybox is one of the worst perpetrators of this. Their bright and colorful thumbnails with exciting visuals promise a stimulating experience, which young kids are drawn to almost immediately. This is made worse by uploads of some of the worst franchise milking I have ever seen. Also, I have realized that they post over five times a day. How is this even possible? It's beyond me. And I genuinely pray for any kid whose attention span is going to get destroyed by these YouTubers. Gooseworks even said when asked about what their villain origin story is, they said that it was Lanky Box. And they are obviously a problem. It's sad to see content creation become more about money than passion lately. Though, I can't disrespect this hustle because these YouTubers do make a lot of money, which is exactly why they continue to make this content in the first place. But for me, that doesn't make it any less gross. But that's about all I have to talk about today. If you found anything that I missed, please leave it down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, then I think you'll like this video on screen right here.